use a hand in here. Uh, hey, computer, uh, can you lend me a hand? No, professor. I am a computer. I have no hands. Oh, that's right. Oh, uh, can you uh, turn on Proto and have him give me a hand? Are you sure you want his help? Uh, well, he's the only other one here. Very well. I will initiate his startup sequence. But I warn you, I do not think helping is one of his many capabilities. Well... Thanks for the warning. Okay, uh, let me know when he's up and running. Happy birthday! Ah, ah, ah. Wow, Avery really needs to fix that. Um, hey Proto, uh, I need your help. I'm working on the flux capacitor and I can't uh, reach my tools at the same time. Yes, Do of course, Professor, I can help with that. Uh, great, so uh, when I ask for my hammer, uh, can you please hand me the hammer? Yes. Just let me know when you have it. I would very much like to help. Um, are you handing me the hammer? No, Professor. Uh, well, why not? Recognizing tools is not one of my many capabilities. <laughs> I warned you, Professor. All right, Proto, a hammer has a wooden handle and a metal head. Do you see anything like that? It, professor. Great job, Proto! Thank you, Professor. I've gained a new capability. Would you like to see me juggle now? Uh, no. Ah, there. All right. It's fixed. All right. Now, I'll need you to enter. When I enter the time machine, you'll only have to count to three this time, and then press the enter key. Do you think you can do that? Of course, Professor, but I can count much higher than three. Would you like to hear me? One, two, skip a few. Ninety-nine, no, uh, 100, no, 101, no, no, 102. Uh, um, no, just three. All right, now remember, I'm going to go into the time machine. You count to three and then press the enter key. Okay? Yes, professor. One, two, three. Oh, great. You totally fooled the guy at the cafe. He had no idea that you were a queen. I must say, pretending to be a commoner is quite thrilling. <laughs> So do you remember what to say, though, if anyone asks who you are? Why, of course! I'm Queen Josephine, wife of Edna no, the Gat. No, 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 <laughs> You're supposed to say that you're Sarah, an exchange student. Oh, yes. Well, while I do not appreciate being told what to do, it does seem you know what you are doing. All right, so I'll go in, and then you follow me. Hello, Professor? Oh, hi, Proto. Um, is the Professor here? No, he just left. Oh, where did he go? I do not know the answer to that question. I can, however, answer other questions like, how long is the Great Wall of China? Or, what is the lifespan of a dragonfly? Or, is the professor testing the machine right now? Is the professor testing the machine right now? Yes, the professor is testing the machine right now. Oh, no, I have a really bad feeling about this. Why do you say that, Miss Avery? <sighs> well, <laughs> the last time he tested the machine, a queen popped out. What are we gonna get this time? A samurai? A, a president? A whale? I hope it's a whale. I really hope that's the professor. Oh. 
Ah, oh, the time machine worked! It finally worked! This is amazing! Well, where did you go? What did you see? Oh, uh, to the Chicago Bears winning the Super Bowl at Wrigley Field. What? Yes, it was a great game. I got there just in time to see Wade scoring the last touchdown in the third quarter. You could go anywhere in time, and you went to a football game? Yes, but it was an amazing game, and it was just a test. I wanted to make sure that it would work when, uh, uh, when I went somewhere really important. Okay, I guess that makes sense. Uh, where's, where's Queen Josephine? Oh, uh, excuse me, who are you? Why, I'm Queen jo I mean, I'm Sarah. Like, an exchange student from Jupiter. Uh, Queen Josephine? Yes. <sighs> well, that didn't last very long. Did you sleep well? I did sleep well, kind professor. Yeah, you'd never know how loudly a queen can snore. I did not snore! There must have been some critterbugs that followed us home. Litterbugs. <clears throat> well... Might I be able to go home soon, kind professor? Ah, yes! That's right, the machine is up and working. You'll be able to go home soon. Oh, to see the castle fair more. To be seated next to King Edward on our royal throne. Huh, I wonder who that could be. Hi, everybody. I'm Bluebird Betty. Who'd like some cookies? We have chocolate, vanilla, chocolate vanilla, chocolate chip, double chocolate, chocolate chunk, and apple for the healthy people. Uh, well, no, thank you. We don't need any cookies right now. What? But everybody loves cookies. Doctors love cookies. Monkeys love cookies. Kids love cookies. Even robots love cookies. Correction. Robots cannot eat cookies. It's not one of our many capabilities. Oh, well, I have some oil uh, or some batteries or some wires. Wait, you sell all of those things? Oh, yeah. Uh, I also have balloons and watches and cars and household cleaning supplies and houses um, and even squishies. Ooh. Might I see that? What does thou call it? A squishy? Sure, lady. It doesn't cost anything to look at it. Speaking of looking, wow, this is a really cool machine. How does it work? Uh, no, no, um, I think you'd better leave. We don't need anything right now, uh, right, Avery? Right. Proto? Correct. Queen Josephine? Oh, well, the squishy is rather intriguing. Queen Josephine. Queen Josephine. Oh, all right. Here you are. But I'm sure you want something. If you buy three things today, you'll win a chance to win a home makeover. Well, I live in the dorms on campus, so I, since I don't own a home, I don't really need a home makeover. You don't know what you want. I'll tell you what you want. Young lady, we have told you that we do not need any wares today. Please. Kindly accept our refusal, or we shall be forced to be less kind in our tone. <laughs> You're just a bunch of meanies. You're not even nice to a little girl. <laughs> hmm, maybe they'll be nicer to an old lady. <laughs> Wow, you sure told her. <laughs> I thought she would never leave. If there's one thing I cannot stand, it is someone not respecting authority. Now, I shall be in yonder cafe drinking a smoothie. <laughs> oh, we sure are getting a lot of strange visitors these days. Oh, we definitely have. But you know, something that girl said about the home makeover remodel, it reminded me of something I read in a book that you let me borrow. So in the Bible, Jesus says that he is going to prepare a place. What does he mean by that? Yes, Avery. The Bible says that Jesus, when he died and resurrected, he went to sit at the right hand of God to prepare a place for Christians. Wow. I didn't know Jesus was doing all of that right now. Is, is everything all right? 
Yeah, I've just been thinking a lot lately about how amazing Jesus is with all that he's done and all that he's doing and all that he's going to do. You know, I know that I've sinned against God and I really want to stop disobeying and start following him. It's just a really big decision. You're right. It is the most important decision of your whole life. Let's talk about it. Thanks, Professor. Wow, good morning, time travelers. We are at Thursday. Can you guys believe it? We have made it three whole days and are about to embark on our fourth day of time travel. But before, yeah, that's right. Thank you, Cameron, for bringing the energy. Does anyone else have as much energy as Cameron? Let me check. Let me check, let me check. Let me check on the energy level of my bright bots. Wow, they're feeling good on Thursday. All right, all right, I like it, I like it. But now, let me see your energy. Nuclear Navigators! Okay, wow, the gauntlet has been thrown. Eternity Excavators, let me see your Thursday energy! Wow, we've got dancing here. That's pretty, pretty impressive. Good job, everyone. Well, I'm excited to be here today because it's another day that we get to be together, that we get to form friendships, that we get to strengthen friendships, that we get to open the Bible and study it together, that we get to do crafts and missions and games and snacks. It's going to be an awesome day. But before we get started on what we're going to learn today, let's do a little review. So who's ready to earn some of my delicious treats, my fruit by the foot? You guys ready? All right, let's test, let's test your memory. On day one, where were we in time? On day one, I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna bring my little box of treats with me. Where did we go on day one? Daniel, where did we see Jesus? Creation, that's right. Good job. Can everyone give Daniel a big round of applause? He's right. We saw Jesus before and at creation, right? And on Monday, we learned that Jesus always has been and always will be. And can anyone remember? This one has proven a little tricky for everyone, but can anyone remember the day one memory verse that we learned? Day one memory verse. Can any, okay, Cameron looks like he's going to burst if I don't call on him. So Cameron, why don't you go ahead and stand up and tell us the day one memory verse. Dude, that was amazing. Good job. Super proud of you. That was amazing. That was day one. Great job, everyone. Okay, then on Tuesday, day two, where did we see Jesus? Megumi. At Moses. Where, where in the Bible? In the Old Testament. Good job. Here you go. Okay, and what was our Bible point for Tuesday? What was our Bible point? Oh, oh, wow, me, me, me. Okay, let me come over here to my friend Deacon. What was our Bible point for Tuesday? I'm going to help you. Ready? Jesus always has been. Jesus always has been. Good. And always will be. And always will be. A promise keeper. A promise keeper. Good job, Deacon. Can I have a big round of applause for my friend Deacon? Now, who can tell me what was our memory verse? I'm going to come back over here to my nuclear navigators. What was our memory verse on Tuesday? Huh, I'm going to pick my friend Ethan. Can you stand up and tell it to us? Oh, wait, 
I'm sorry, Ethan, hold on one second. We need to all have quiet voices because Ethan's going to tell us what our memory verse was for Tuesday. So let's listen. Go ahead. Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Dude, nailed it. That was amazing. Great job, Ethan. And what did we learn about Jesus on Tuesday? Let's see here. Elodie. <laughs> on oh wait no we already did Tuesday right yes yeah, sorry okay now we're okay I'm coming back to you I'm coming back to you because you have tomorrow to yesterday's memory verse down okay day three where did we see Jesus in the timeline so we did Jesus before and at creation we did Jesus in the Old Testament and then yesterday we did oh my goodness my nuclear navigators Tyson Jesus in the New Testament. Good job, everybody. Now, what did we learn? I need quiet voices, my friends. Everyone sit crisscross applesauce. Thank you. Put your hands down until I ask the question. Good job. Now, what was our Bible point from yesterday? What did we learn about Jesus? Yes, Trevor said. Jesus in the New Testament. We already said that. What, did, what was our Bible point from yesterday, Jackie? Jesus always has been and always will be. What did we talk about? Ready to do what? Ready to be a promise keeper? That's right. That was from Tuesday. Lauren, what did we learn yesterday? Always has been and always will be. Ready to love and Yep, anyone who repents and believes. Good job. Jesus always has been and always will be ready to love and forgive anyone who repents and believes. Can we give a big round of applause? Good job. Oh, I didn't forget about my friend Elodie. Elodie's going to stand up and tell us what our memory verse was from yesterday because she was ready for it. John 3.16, go for it. John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, and whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Awesome job. Great job, Elodie. I'm so proud of you. You guys, you are doing an awesome job learning all about Jesus from eternity past to eternity future. Now do you know what I need? I need some volunteers. But you know what, time travelers? I'm not going to choose you. I want you guys to choose your leaders. I need six leaders to come up here and help me. All right, Katya, Jacob, come on up. Who else? Mrs. Markland looks like she's being shoved. Miss Charlotte, Mrs. Elliot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Perfect. Okay. Here we go. So we're going to do our little timeline. So Jacob, can you come stand over here? Remember our kind of Jesus. I want you to hold this right here. Hold it up high. Good job. And then Miss Katya, I'm going to have you walk our Jesus timeline all the way to the other side of the stage. Good. Just unravel it all along the way. And then Miss Charlotte, I'm going to have you come stand right here. And then Miss Trisha, you can come stand next to Miss Charlotte. And then Mrs. Elliot and Mrs. Colomac. And we are good. And then let's see, maybe Mrs. Brewer. Will you come hold it? Hold, yeah, hold it on the side. And then Katya can keep walking with it. So you're going to do what Jacob's doing. Hold it on the side over there because this is our Jesus timeline. So what we're going to look at, you guys, just so we can have a visual of where we've been. Let's see. Here's Miss Charlotte. First, we learned that Jesus always has been in eternity past, right? So he was always before and at creation, right? Then we learned about Jesus in the Old Testament. Can anyone raise a quiet hand and tell me what was the special word that we learned about Jesus when we see Jesus in the Old Testament? Can anyone remember? Let me see Emma. Christophany, great job. Good job. Okay, so then we learned about Jesus in the Old Testament. Then do you guys know what happened in between the Old Testament and the New Testament? There was like a 400 year gap. So Mrs. Elliot's gonna come stand right here because there was a little bit of gap of time in between there. And then we learned about Jesus in the New Testament. 
Now, today, Mrs. Colomac is going to hold this. We're going to learn about Jesus now, where Jesus is today. But remember, this line represents Jesus. He always has been before and at creation, and he's going to keep going and going and going into eternity future. But today, this is where we are on the timeline. Got it? Can we give a big round of applause to my leaders for helping us out today? Great job, great job, looking good. You guys can just drop the tool. I'll take these. Thank you so much. Great job, everyone. Would you guys like a fruit by the foot, too? Anyone? Anyone? <laughs> All right, you guys. Well, yesterday, yesterday, quiet voices, everyone. Let's go take a seat. Quiet voices. Yesterday, we learned that Jesus died on the cross for our sin, right? And now we're going to pick up the story to learn about what happened after that. If you guys remember, I said that Jesus, after he rose again, he did not appear to one or two or three or four people, but he appeared to hundreds and hundreds of people who saw him after he rose again. And then he spent some time with his disciples. He had a little conversation with Peter, which you're going to discuss all in your small groups today. But at the very end of his earthly ministry, Jesus went back into heaven. In Luke 24, 51 through 53, this is what it says. While he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. So after Jesus died and rose again, he was then taken back up into heaven, which is where he is now. And do you know something, my time travelers? Jesus told us what he was going to be doing while he went back to heaven. He told us while he was here on earth what he would be doing once he went back to be with God the Father. And this is what he said in John 14 too. And actually, you guys are going to want to pay special attention to this because this is your daily memory verse for today. In John 14 too, Jesus said, in my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? Jesus right now is in heaven preparing an eternal home for those who are Christians. For those who, like we talked about yesterday, have the response to the gospel to turn from their sin and place their trust in Christ. Now, I want to tell you guys a little bit of story about when Mrs. Schrader was a little girl. When I was a little girl, I thought the Barbie dream house was, thank you, yes, Miss Jill's agreeing with me, the Barbie dream house was the coolest, most exciting home that any person and or plastic figurine would, could possibly live in. And so I'm going to have Mr. Schrader, can we give a round of applause for Mr. Schrader? He's going to come up. <laughs> now, did you guys know you guys are going out to games? Did you guys know that Mr. Schrader is my husband? Yeah. This is my husband. He's the one been leading you guys in games all week long. And he's our lovely house model. Now, I was so sad. I could not find the Barbie dream house anywhere yesterday. But what I did find... Let's step forward a little bit. What I did find was this awesome Peppa Pig house. And you know what's pretty cool about this house? Let's look at it, time travelers. It's got a little dining area. It's got a living room. It's got these cool bunk beds. There's this cool bathtub in here. There is a bedroom up here. It even has an attic. Look, with a telescope to look up to the stars. So cool. And this house, it's got, it's got a lot of rooms, right? Let's count how many rooms. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This house has got seven rooms. I got to tell you, that's more rooms than my house has. So this house looks pretty cool to me. And it's got one, two, three, four stories. Wow, it's four stories tall. That looks like a pretty cool house to live in. Can we say thank you to Mr. Schrader? Thank you, Mr. Schrader. Lovely job. Thank you, thank you. What a lovely model he is. 
you know what, my time travelers? That house looked awesome. And when I was little, I thought that the Barbie dream house, I'll tell you one thing that was cool about the Barbie dream house, it had an elevator that you would pull the little string and put your Barbie on and the Barbie would go doo -doo 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 -doo, you know, up to whatever floor you wanted her to be on. And I thought that that was awesome. But you know what? Heaven is being prepared for us, not by a toy maker, but by the maker of the universe. Heaven is being prepared for us by Jesus, who in the Bible we learned on Monday, the world was created through. And so when you go out into creation and you see the beautiful mountains and you see the gorgeous colors in the sunset and you see rivers and lakes and the ocean and all the beautiful things that God created, we want to stop and say, wow, can we even imagine what heaven is going to be like that Jesus is spending time preparing and making ready for his people? That's pretty incredible to think about, isn't it? I think so too. All right, I'm going to need some uh, help. If we can go back to the daily Bible verse, I'm going to need some help. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? I'm going to need some help because I think I've seen a lot of different groups coming up with different hand motions for verses. What if today, what if we learn hand motions all together? And then we can all have the same hand motions that we're doing the verses to. Does that sound good? Okay, so let's go like this. In my Father's house. Good. And now let's make rooms with our hands are many rooms. Can you guys see that? Kind of like pretend like you're doing an outline of that Peppa Pig house. We're making many rooms. So let's try that again. Ready? In my father's house are many rooms. And then do this. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go, because where did he go? Up to heaven, that I go. Let's try that again. Ready? It's from the beginning. In my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go? I missed this part, didn't I? Sorry. Would I have told you that I go? Now we're going to do this. To prepare, like we're building, okay? Think that you're building something. To prepare a place for you. What do you guys think? Good? Okay, now let's open our Bibles and see where we get it from. We'll open our Bibles and say John 14.2. Okay, should we put that all together? Okay, ready? Let's go. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? Now we open our Bibles. John 14.2. Good job, you guys. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. I think we're going to, I think everyone in this room is going to have that Bible verse memorized by the time we even walk out of here. Okay, do you think I could have just my bright bots say that verse? Do you guys want to stand up? Let's stand up together, my bright bots. Good job. Okay, are you guys ready? Show me that you're ready. Oh, lovely, lovely faces. Ready? In my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? John 14, 2. Can we give them a round of applause, you guys? That was awesome. Really good job. Okay, eternity, or my, not my eternity excavators. I'm going to go to my nuclear navigators. Can you guys stand up for me? Good job. Are you guys ready to say the verse? Yeah. Do you guys think you can say it a little bit louder and stronger? Yeah. I think you guys can too. Ready? Let's go. In my father's house, whoa, are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? John 14, 2. Wow. That was amazing. You know where I'm coming next. You know where I'm coming, Eternity Excavators. Stand on up. 
You guys are our leaders. You guys are our biggest kids. So let me hear it loud and strong as you guys set an example for the rest of our time travelers. Are you ready? Wow. Are you ready? Okay, there we go. Ready? In my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? John 14, 2. Wow, great job, everyone. All right, my friends. Well, today's, oh, I want you guys all to sit down, crisscross applesauce. Thank you so much. Well, today's Bible point that we're going to be thinking about as we move all throughout our campus is this. All of our Bible points has started with Jesus always has been and always will be. Do you guys notice that? Because we're talking about Jesus in eternity. So he always has been and he always will be caring for his children even now from heaven as he prepares a place for those who turn to him in repentance and faith, right? Jesus always has been and always will be caring for his children even now from heaven. Can you guys say that with me? Jesus always has been and always will be caring for his children even now from heaven. Great job, you guys. Well, as always, we're going to spend the rest of the day talking about those things. You're going to see that in crafts, in snack, out in games, to be reminded of what we learned this morning. And when we come back this afternoon, I'm going to be looking for some friends who can tell me where we were on the timeline today, where did we see Jesus, the memory verse that we just worked on several times, and this Bible point. So if you want to earn a fruit roll-up, you better come back this afternoon with all those things solid in your mind, all right? Let's pray. We haven't done five fingers yet. Do any of my friends know five fingers? Let's do five fingers. Okay, ready? We go like this. I have five fingers here and five fingers there to fold together in quiet prayer. Let's bow our heads, close our eyes, and put our thoughts on God. Dear God, I thank you so much for day four of Camp Compass. I thank you, God, that these time travelers, these Compass kids, are getting to learn and see Jesus from eternity past to eternity future. God, I pray that as they move about this campus today that you would keep them all safe, that you would be solidifying this uh, teaching that they've learned today stronger um, in their minds and in their hearts to be another building block in that solid biblical foundation we pray would be built in the life of every single child in this room. Give them a great day today, God, as they um, have day four of Camp Compass. Please keep everyone safe, and may we be brought back together here this afternoon, ready to sing uh, your praises and review all that we've learned today. In Jesus' name, amen.